good. I want a Yeah. 
Bless you. Uh, it's been a while since I've been out here. Who did? And, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. um, it's, it's amazing how God works things out. Um, you know, I wasn't planning on being up here speaking this morning, but you wanted me to be, so here I am. Uh, you know, this morning was very difficult for me uh, when I got here because I've been sensing this confusion in the atmosphere uh, pretty much as I, since I got here. And it's because I'm supposed to share something that has been in... in my heart for the last couple of days, uh, and not to put anyone on the spot, but I am actually going to do it. Uh, I believe this is for you, Peter. Sure. Um, and that's why when we were rehearsing this morning, uh, I started crying because I didn't know if I should just stop the rehearsal all together and just basically gather around you and speak this word and, and pray over you for your situation because it really breaks my heart. It's, it's, it's hard for me to comprehend how we both work for the same company and we experience similar, similar things but how they affect us differently and, and why they have you in the situation that you're in. But I heard these words a while ago, and I just thought it was just a nice message, something to remember. But as, as, as I read your post the other day, this is the very first thing that came to my mind. And I've been trying to figure out when to share with you. So I'm paraphrasing here, but this is what this person said uh, halfway through a worship song when they were planning. Uh, she was saying that the only thing that should be greater than your fear is your conviction that God is good and that he's been good since the garden and before that. So even if your understanding of him is not where you want it to be or you haven't experienced him in a certain way, understand that he's good. Sometimes we say things because we believe them, because we are sure. Sometimes we say them until we are sure. So if you haven't seen him manifest in the thing that you feel called for, in your family, your relationships, in your life, prophesy his goodness. Prophesy that he is good. Speak that over yourself. Over and over, prophesy that he is good. Thank you. Uh, You know, God reminds us of how good He is every day, which is probably why the first two songs that I selected for today talk about how good He is. Um, you know, the devil will try to take you down at every opportunity he has because we have been selected. We have this mandate that we are to go share with the world who God is because we have experience who He is. We have an understanding, uh, you know, some more than others, of who the God of the Bible is and, and the words that are revealed to us. And that's what bring, that's what brings people to Him when, when, when a person truly opens their heart, puts away all logic, and lets their spirit hear instead of their ears, just their spirit. When there's that communication between your spirit and the Holy Spirit, and you have that revelation that your mind is transformed and you get that understanding, you can just sit there in awe because you're like, this has been like this my entire life and now is when I'm finding this out? That's what brings people to Jesus. So just 
remember that. Uh, remember that he's good. He's always been good, no matter what people try to tell you, what the devil tries to tell you. Just remember that he will not leave you or forsake you, and he's always by your side. Any so. prayer requests or testimonies? Um, first of all, I, I just want to, uh, I'm so thankful for this church. Um, I'm thankful that we have a Facebook group that's private that we can put prayer requests out on. I'm, I'm dealing with stuff at, the, at a different level. I've been dealing with a lot of junk for, for years in my different jobs. Um, like in, in just talking to the pastor just before service, you know, it, I'm, I know it's the Holy Spirit that, you know, that, that causes some of this demonic stuff to rise up, but it's, it's, it doesn't make it any, I want to say it doesn't make it any easier, but it does make it easier. Um, it, it's still, it's still tough wrestling through. I mean, I, I'm just thankful that, that there's a mature body of believers here that's willing to pray. I, um, it was really hard for me to open up on Monday, but I didn't plan and put, put that post on Facebook, but I didn't know what else to do. I, I started working that morning at 7 a.m. and didn't get done until late 15 at night. And I'm just, you know, still, that's, it's never enough for me. We always want more stuff, and I'm always told that I'm not getting it done fast enough or that I should have had it done before now and that I did this wrong or that wrong. And so it's, um, but, but the funny thing is, is outside of my team, I'm told of how great of a job I'm doing. But never within my team right now. But, so I, I'm just thankful that we have this church here because right now this church is the only thing that we have that we're we're clinging to because um, we do need prayer for Jamie. Still continue prayer for her pain. She she lives in, with pain constantly. You know we quote the scriptures, we pray, and we haven't seen relief yet. We believe we're going to see relief, but it's, it's still hard. You know going day by day with that. It, it's hard when we've had attacks on our finances for years now. And you know, I I don't know how we're going to make it. I don't know how we're going to do it. Um, I know God wants us to start this business. I don't know when I'm going to find the time to do that, but I'm just believing that He'll give me the the courage to do it. Because right now there's a lot of fear. Because mm -hmm. I when I start the day, and I don't know you may know this from in your job at Wells Roberto. I don't know whenever I'm going to get done for the day. I don't know what's going to face me today and what I'm going to be. You know, if we're going to have an issue that I'm going to then end up working until 10 o'clock at night on, I don't know. And so it makes it really hard to do anything else. So, but anyway, I just, Jamie needs prayer, and I'm just thankful for this body. Thank you for all your prayers. I appreciate it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Anyone else? Okay. Yes, uh, I want to. Tell them 
you know, what the weather's going to be, how we're going to be flying, what the state's going to go over. And he was so confident by the bell, I'm flying this plane, everything's going to be fine. And I just thought that was so good. There's a little weather we're going to run into, but I'll get you through it as fast as I could. And to have that comfort, it was like Jesus was flying the plane and saying, you know, you just stay in this plane, we're going to get there. And, and we hit a little turbulence, we come over like Montana and stuff. He said, and he'd come on and he'd come on and say, we're going to get through this job as soon as possible, so we'll have a nice ride. And just that comfort, it was like Jesus. Just let me know periodically that, hey, I'm still flying this plane. You just need to trust me and we'll get to the destination. You know, and it was the best landing that we ever, out of all the planes we had. And his voice just coming on periodically. Just, it was like Jesus just saying, that's all I ask you is just to trust me. Okay, I'm the pilot. I'm not the co-pilot. I'm the pilot of the plane. I've got the experience, and I'm going to get you from it. You know, where you got on the plane, I'm going to get your destination. Just trust me. Yes. And he's still saying that. Yes. So I just want to thank the Lord for the yes. Amen. 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 Forgot a couple other things. So the Lord had showed me, you know, with, with everything going on the last couple of weeks, why I'm at this job. You know, I, I I didn't pick this job. The Lord picked it for me. I, I didn't have to apply or anything. But he showed me that I'm supposed to be there for other people. And so, you know, the, these two people that are lying against me, I am praying for their salvation. I am praying that they come to know Jesus. And, and what was really neat is that one of these these women, she she's from India. She's not a believer. She believes in, well, not the Lord Jesus, but she believes in karma. And I don't know exactly yet what her beliefs are. But she's, she's accused me of a lot of things. Your boss. And I actually had an opportunity Thursday or Friday, I forget which it was, to kind of explain to her how I do life and, and to try to start sowing some seeds. And it was really awesome because she was really taken back by, you know, I, I don't get to ever work with anybody in person. Everybody I work with, even though she she's on the other side of town in the same city as me, um, ironically, the two people that are giving me problems are, are in Des Moines. Everybody else I work with is in Arizona, Charlotte, or India. Um, that I got to share with her, you know, kind of, you know, you can't impact how you're treated in life, but all you have control over is how you treat others. And that at the end of this life, I don't think I'll be judged over, you know, what other people did to me. I'm going to judge, you know, did I love other people and did I do what I'm supposed to do for other people and serve them and, and love them. And it was really awesome because she was really taken back by that. And I was just, you know, I'm going to continue sowing seeds, hopefully, into her life because she's, she must be a very insecure person because she likes to point the finger and blame everybody else when something goes wrong and, and can't accept any responsibility or blame for herself. So, but I'm just praying for continued opportunities to hopefully, you know, as, as you know, it's, you, you have to be careful in how you share the gospel someplace that doesn't allow you to really share things. But I, I mean, like my boss was sick this week. I got to let her know. I, I've been open with my boss and told my boss how I feel. I've told my boss, you know, I'm praying for, you know, I try to encourage my boss. You know, I'm, I'm there for other people to pray for and encourage, you know, like the, the co-worker whose mom had cancer. It, and, and it's been awesome in that respect. E even though the devil meant these things for evil, God's turned them around for his Amen. 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 Anywhere else? Okay, just one more uh, prayer request for uh, myself. For restoration of my voice. Uh, over the past few weeks, I've noticed my vocal range diminishing a little bit, so I cannot hit certain notes that I could before when I'm here singing. Uh, so for God to restore my voice back to what it was before. I don't know if it's that I'm making too many weird noises when I'm listening to other kinds of music or what it is, but I don't know. Anyway, uh, if no one else is thinking, let's just uh, stand. And go to the Lord this morning. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for giving us the opportunity to be here, Lord, and share the things that you have to say to us. We thank you, Lord, for your love, for your goodness, Father. 
We know, Lord, that you do not judge the people, Lord. You have already some judgment to be taken by your only Son, Jesus Christ, to redeem us, to get us closer to you. Lord, we thank you, Father, because we have all the blessings. And you give us your word, your revelation, Lord, and you manifest in our lives in the exact moment that manifestation is supposed to happen, Lord. We continue to speak your word and pray your word and declare it over our lives and the lives of others, Lord, and consider the lives Give us the boldness to come to you and present to you all of our requests, all of our dreams, everything that is virtually in us, and you have said, bring them to me and I will take care of them. Thank you, Lord, because you manifest in every aspect of our lives. You bless us with all the things that you to bring to us and help us help others, but you also bless us with people in our lives that we can minister or we can minister to. We thank you, Lord, because we are all your children. Oh, Lord, you have embraced us. We are your own, Lord. We are your creation. We have your spirit inside of us that reveals to us your word, the things that we are to do and say in whatever situation that we are in. And we thank you, Father, for your goodness, Lord. We'll continue to declare and speak your word over our lives, the lives of others, Father, continue to believe that your word is true and will manifest in whatever it is that we speak to you according to your will. cell phone, uh, please silence it by either turning it off or putting it in vibration. Thank you. Okay, this coming Friday, uh, Eastern Gatehouse Prayer. I cannot, and please listen to my words very carefully, I cannot stress enough how good of a time this is. you got to come and experience this because you're going to come in here, a kitty, you're going to leave a lion. Yes. Yes. That's how much you get transformed in, in this house of prayer. It, it, is Kingdom House of Prayer the next day then? Yeah. Yes. That's, that's what <laughs> Okay. What do you think? What am I hearing? Yeah. The last 72 hours has been about uh, the trafficking that's going on. Today, Super Bowl Sunday, there will be thousands and thousands of kids from 3 years old to 15 years old getting thrown into the lion's den and just getting chewed up and just going into a living hell. <clears throat> I've been, uh, we've had uh, Golden Gate Ranch speaking here at the last ladies' women conference who has to deal with those children who've been through these situations and got escaping from it. But today, today is a, uh, a terrible day for many of these kids' lives. They're just going to get thrown into these things that taken out of the normal lifestyle and, and sold into the slavery that is just an abomination in the Lord's face, and I understand that. And in their session this morning, about 3 or 4 o'clock this morning, I said, Lord, what do we have to do to get these kids free? He said, you have to go after the hearts of men. If you go after the hearts of men, that the hearts would change in these men that are desiring these things, that it changes there the market would dry up and these children would not be stolen. They would not be ripped off the streets, out of schools, even in the malls where they're walking through the malls they get pulled into gangs and then they go downhill from there. If you change the hearts of men, of men that desire will dissipate. There will be nowhere for them children to be taken away and sold to because no one would want to go down that road. So we will intercede this Friday night, and it may continue into Saturday up in Heartland when we uh, go up there. Uh, all I know is uh, today, even today, start praying because this has got to this has got to break. Um, even in Des Moines, Des Moines is a hub. There are there are hundreds of kids that are getting involved, and even going through the city today, 
are going through this nightmare, this hell that needs to be broken. Change the hearts of men, even right now. That as they endure and as they go through these situations today, that they have no taste for it. That there's no desire in their hearts. Lord, change the hearts of men yes, now. Lord. Amen. Right now. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we are asking for some help in the sound booth. I uh, praying that someone will come forward to help with the needs of all the events we have going on in the church. Uh, I'm guessing that Michael is. Right. Michael is the go-to person. Okay. He's the uh, lead person in the sound booth. Um, we'll need help with uh, Roberto's covering for Sheila today for bringing up scriptures and working with the recordings. Uh, Roberto will be uh, moving on in the fall. This gives us a little more time to train someone who's called to help on that. We need someone on the sound board itself. Um, Myron is moving to Texas, at least uh, um, he's there in a way already. Yeah. Um, we need to train up someone now. I uh, don't want to wait till it's empty because right now Michael's bouncing between the camera and the soundboard. And me being personally in that situation, and you're getting divided. You can't you can sit down and listen to what's going on correctly, and you can't record things that need to be recorded correctly. You can't do both. So pray about it, and the person or persons that are to be involved in it that are supposed to be here, uh, pray them for us. Some people are missing them to be here. Yeah, I'd just like to add to that. The Sunday school department, uh, we still need some, some help there too, especially with the younger kids. Uh, Mike's been dealing with the teens and uh, youth, but uh, we still would appreciate people to step forward. And, uh, it doesn't have to be on a permanent basis, but just temporarily to give the other two gals a break from time to time so they can get some of the sanction. If anybody that's willing to, it's not a hard thing. Uh, you know, you talk to Suzanne or Jamie, either one, and they can tell you, give you some insight into what, uh, what you need to be prepared to do and how to handle this. These are young kids. They, you don't have to have a degree in theology. You just show them the love of Jesus and teach them the basics and, and the help them to come into that atmosphere to experience the presence of the Lord. That's what they'll remember more than anything else, especially. Anybody that, that can would be greatly appreciated. And the Lord bless you. Lord. Just pray and see if uh, God will speak to you and step up. And even if it's just once in a month or every five or six weeks or something, just to get the other And also, on that note, uh, you can the CDs of the sermon. If you're down teaching and stuff, the, the church will give you a CD for the sermon that was preached that day. Uh, you can sign up for it. Just put SS on there for Sunday school. I'll make sure you get a copy of the sermon so you don't miss out on the sermon, even though you're teaching downstairs. I cheat because I didn't watch the video only on that day, so. <laughs> All right, and then one more announcement. It's not there because I forgot. My bad. Um, Financial Peace University is coming back. Woohoo! Uh, I'm planning on doing another session before I leave. I'm thinking mid March. So if you're interested, official announcement will come uh, next Sunday. The last time we did it, which was the first time, it was really good. Uh, we had amazing results with the uh, households that signed up. Uh, I'm also asking for a person to lead this session with me. I need to pass the baton to someone else so that we can continue this ministry. So if you're interested in doing that, just let me know and we'll coordinate. Very cool. All right. So now let's take an offering. Uh, Toby and Eric, would you mind?
stand and believe in it each and every day, Lord. Claim this victory in you. Now, Lord, we ask that you bless this offering. Bless the gift of the giver in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray. You ready? You count in for your glory.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you,
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just thank you this morning. Thank you, Lord, for what you've already done. We thank you for your ever presence, Lord, that you never leave us or forsake us. We thank you, Lord, as you continue to minister through your word by your spirit, Lord. We trust you, Lord. We put our confidence our future, our present in your hands, Lord. We know you are faithful and just and quick to forgive, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your bountiful mercies, for your great goodness. Thank you for every word that you've given us that in faith, Lord, we stand on and believe that it shall come to pass even as you have spoken. And we bless your name this morning. And everybody said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Praise God. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Roberto. Thank you, worship team. Great job as always. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord. Praise God. Sunday school kids can be dismissed. Thank the Lord. Amen. You know, you never get old. You do get older, but we never really get old. I, at least that's my stance on this thing. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And, you know, they, they say that if you, as long as you keep learning, you know, you're, you keep yourself young, right? Yeah. So I'm expanding my skills. I can now forget what I'm doing while I'm actually doing it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God is good. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we're getting everything situated up here. Uh, my neighbor banged on my door at 2 o'clock in the morning. I mean banging on my door at 2 o'clock in the morning. Can you believe that? 2 a.m. <laughs> Lucky for him, I was still up lighting fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Thank the Lord. If you live where I live, that would not be as funny as you might think because I'm not necessarily lighting them up, but somebody is all the time. We live in a firecracker-free zone, praise the Lord. So. Praise God. All right, God bless all of you. Appreciate you all being here this morning. And uh, let's get to the Word of God. Amen. Romans chapter 6, and we're going to read beginning at uh, verse 7 through 9. Romans 6. Verse 7 through 9. Praise God. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. Praise the Lord. All right. Psalms chapter 91, or excuse me, Psalms 91, verse 1. Psalms 91, verse 1. Now, before I read this with you, dying to self is trusting God. Yes. Yes. Dying to your soul, dying to your natural way of thinking, amen? That's trusting in the Spirit. God is a Spirit, right? So that's what we're talking about here this morning. And in Psalms uh, 91... Verse 1, it says that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And so dwelling in the secret place isn't some vague shadowy force with uh, spiritual implications. It's not something that people cannot understand. Dwelling in the secret place is looking into the empty tomb 
and seeing the finished work of Jesus. Praise the Lord. So let's do quickly just John chapter 20, verse 11 and 12. Mary stood without the sepulcher, weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher, and seeth two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. Anybody that's ever seen the Ark of the Covenant knows that's what the mercy seat looks like. Angelic beings on either end with their wings spread over the mercy seat. Amen. And so it's this talking about the, the secret place of the Most High, abiding in Christ. It's seeing the mercy seat with these angels' wings spread where Jesus' body had lain. You can trust what's underneath God's wings because it's atonement. It's mercy. It's grace. Praise the Lord. Psalms 91 verse 4. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. It, it's not something geographical. It's not a location somewhere on the earth or in a physical realm. It's a spiritual reality that you can refuse to be moved from, if you will. Praise the Lord. Under the shadow of the Almighty, under His wings, praise the Lord, in the mercy seat, in that empty tomb, praise the Lord, where the finished works of Jesus are, are revealed to us or expressed to us, amen, there is peace, there's comfort, there's protection, there's provision, amen. And you can choose, you can make a choice, amen, to never be moved from that location, to never be moved from that reality, praise the Lord. Uh, again, Psalms 91, verse 8 through 11. Got a lot of scriptures, Roberto. You may want your wristbands for that carpal tunnel, praise the Lord. Okay. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. Yes. There shall no evil befall thee, yes. neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Praise the Lord. In Christ. Amen. If you can see yourself in this secret place, the secret place of the Most High, God will keep you and God will dispatch angels, amen, to help keep you safe. Amen. Messengers from God. God will, you know, there are angelic beings. Believe it or not, there are angels all around this place, in this place right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I remember, that, there used to be a song we'd sing in Pentecost. I hear the brush of angel wings. I see glory all around. It's the presence of the Lord. Praise the Lord. And these angelic beings are here. And they are sent by God to protect us. To direct us. To help us. Amen. In everything that we do. Praise the Lord. Under the shadow of the Almighty, under His wings, amen, there is protection and there is provision. And we can make the choice to not be moved from that location, from that reality. Amen. Praise the Lord. L look at this in Revelation chapter 12 and verse 6. Angels. I, can't I don't know about you, but there's been times in my life where I know there had to be an angelic being involved or I'd not be here today. Some of it before I was saved, amen, and some of it since. Yes. We've all had those things. If it had just happened a second quicker, yes. you know, a second later, I wouldn't be here. I'd be gone. Right. Amen. God has protected us. Right. Amen. He has dispatched angels yes. to keep us safe. Praise the Lord. And just because we can't see Him makes them no less real. Right. Praise the Lord. I've never seen God, but you'll never convince me that He isn't. Right. Yes. Praise the Lord. Right. He is. And shall always be. Praise the Lord. So it says, And the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. That woman is the bride. Is, it's the church. It's us. Individually and collectively. That's 1260 days that she's fed and taken care of. 
that happens to be three and a half years. That three and a half years is the same as Jesus' ministry on earth. When the enemy comes against us, we simply feed on what's under his wings. Praise the Lord. He's our provider, our protector. Amen. When we feed on this hidden manna, he called it. He says the son of righteousness arises with healing in his wings. And deliverance is the result. And that's true no matter what you're facing today. Maybe financial, maybe physical, maybe emotional, maybe relational. But God has the answer. He has the provision to feed you, to comfort you, to protect you, amen, with healing in his wings. If thou canst believe. And we've talked about this uh, a lot of times, but I'm, I'll just say it for the sake of repetition. But what comes out of our mouth determines what we experience in so many ways. God gave us the power of life and death, and that power is in the tongue. That's what separates us from every other form of life on this planet. It makes us like God. Speaking spirits is one of the, the, the translations of, of what, how God created man. Amen? And we use that so foolishly by saying things that we don't want. Amen? That we don't want to experience because we're repeating facts instead of truth. If you can't say the truth, shut the hell up. Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes. Praise the Lord. I'm not trying to be vulgar. I'm just being honest. You know, that's, that's coming from someplace besides your spirit. Yes. And I'm not trying to be rude or, or idiotic, but look, at, I, we all got to do this. Yes. You have to set a watch over your tongue because if you don't, you know the blasphemies that will come out of your mouth. Yes. Things that are just totally contrary to the Word of God. Things that will get you into all kinds of messes that only God can get you out of. Praise the Lord. So, discipline. That's what this is about. Discipleship is disciplining yourself to only say what the Word of God says. Amen. Remember, it was Eve that was beguiled. Now, we spent some time on this a while back. So, ladies, relax. Praise the Lord. But we know that this is about spirit always referred to as masculine, soul always referred to as feminine. It has nothing to do with the sex. It has to do with, you know, the identification and language, praise the Lord. So we know God is not male or female, even though we refer to him as heavenly father. He's also the many-breasted one, the provider that, that always sustains and so on and so forth. So God has no gender. He's God. And we are created in his image. We are spirit beings that have... Though we may be male or female in the natural, in the spirit, we are both yes. male, female in terms of spirit and then our uh, godlike qualities, amen, that are, that are also feminine. So Eve is the one that was beguiled. Why? Because the serpent never comes to your spirit. He cannot beat you in the spirit. He's already defeated in, by the spirit. He has to come to your soul realm. He has to come to your way of thinking. He has to come to your natural way, your five senses, your way of looking at life, your experiences, the things that you're seeing. That's why he comes with your a bad report from the bank. You know, a, a bad report on the job. Amen. A bad report from a spouse. A bad report in your health. A bad something that you can see, something you can touch, something you can smell, taste, and feel. Amen. He has to affect us that way. Remember, and I know it sounds this may not ring true with somebody, but it's biblical. Satan is defeated. Yes. He is a defeated foe. Yes. Spiritually, he has no power in the spirit realm anymore. The only place he has power is in this realm. And he, that's why he's called the God, little g, of this world. Because right. he can only affect in the natural realm. He's got to capture your thinking and, and your natural way of operating, or he has no power over you. Right. But if he can get you in the flesh, your spirit is over here and you're over here dealing with all of this natural stuff when God has given you power over that, yes. given you victory over it, but you have to exercise it. Yes. And one of the ways we do that is by not saying what we see and taste and touch and feel, but say what the Word of God says about it. Yes. Stay faithful, amen, to the Word. The Word became flesh and dwells on, not only among us, but in us now. Yes. Praise the Lord. So He always comes to your feminine soul, the, uh, Satan does. The place where thought is conceived. Praise God. Satan always tries to get her to get the soul 
to doubt the finished work. To move out from under God's sheltering wings and to make herself like God. I can do this. If I work hard enough, if I try hard enough, if I'm good enough, if I you know, behave properly, it won't work, church, I'm telling you. Because first of all, you'll never be able to do it. You might get good, you know, for two or three days, you might really do well and be very impressed with yourself. But I promise you, you will screw it up so that you'll be totally humiliated by yourself and then under condemnation. That's what the devil wants to do. Get you into the flesh so that when you fail, he can then condemn you. The harder you try, the better to be, the worse you are. Praise God. Romans chapter 2, verse 28 and 29. Romans 2, excuse me, 28 and 29. I've said before, from the cross, everything is subjective and objective. There's a part we play, not to get it, but to, to operate in it. Just like the words that come out of our mouth. Now, God, the work is finished. But we can say stuff that will screw everything up. So there, there, there's a part that we do play, not in salvation, not in, in being redeemed, but in the living the abundant life. Life on earth. As far as heaven's concerned, that's a settled situation. We're, we're there. We're, we're already seated with Him in heavenly places. But this earth, we've got to bring heaven to earth. We have to make heaven a reality on this planet. Amen. That's why we're still here. If that were not the case, He could have just yanked us all out of here, drowned us when we were baptized. Just be done and move on and be with the Lord, right? Because there wouldn't be any other reason for us to hang out here. So he's not a Jew which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart. In the spirit and not in the letter. Whose praise is not of men but of God. Praise the Lord. Now let's look at this in Revelation chapter 2 and verse 9. I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. So the authentic Jew, and this is just, all this is just a metaphor or a type of children of God being a child of God. We know that that's who we are, right? By birth, by being born again. But the authentic Jew that God is dealing with right now are the ones who have had an inward circumcision. Ones that are led by the Spirit. Ones that are Spirit-dominated, not soul-dominated. If you recognize under the, old, under the Old Covenant, they didn't have the Holy Spirit. Their only option was to do everything that the law commanded and then offer sacrifice on top of sacrifice on top of sacrifice in order to be protected from their inability to keep the law. Right? So the person who's a true Jew in the mind of God and the way that he speaks here is the person who is dominated by the Spirit and not by the flesh. Who, who walks in the Spirit and not through the soul realm or through the natural realm. Good news is when we fail and deviate and go to that fail-safe, the old fallback plan, which is natural life, we still have forgiveness and mercy. But there are consequences. So it's just like I go out here and rob, I've said this many times, not because I have, I've probably thought about it at some point in my life, but I go rob a liquor store, I'm, God is not going to punish me and send me to hell. But the cops will put me in jail for 10 years or 15 years or something. That's consequences of physical behavior. It has nothing to do with me spiritually, amen, as far as my relationship with God is concerned. It might say a lot about my understanding of that. But you know what I'm saying? It, it, it doesn't affect my relationship with God, but there are still consequences for it. Yes. Amen. So that's what we're, we have to be led by the Spirit to avoid the consequences of the flesh. Right. The good news is, even when we screw up God many times, still continues to protect us and yes. provide for us and yes. help us to repent, to get our mind corrected so we get back on track. The way God, all of us go up and down, we used to call it backsliding, yeah. which is an Old Testament language. It does, you can't backslide in the New Testament because once you've been born again, you're born again forever. Now, you can do some really stupid stuff after you've been born again, 
but that's just not operating in, in the spirit. Praise the Lord. So, hallelujah. John chapter 8, and we'll read verses 39 through 44. John 8, 39 through 44. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I know it's in there. I read it. There it is. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. These are the Jews speaking, right? Abraham's our father. And Jesus says to them, if you were Abraham's children, you'd do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. You do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We're not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. And Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. You are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Every time the enemy comes to your flesh, he's lying. Yes. He may have some facts, but he has no truth. That's right. That's good. And you have to recognize that. Because yes. most of us, sadly, we're two days into the battle before we realize it's a, bat it's a spiritual battle. Yes. We're just thinking somebody's acting really stupid and i got to respond. Amen. I mean, I'm, I'm not picking on anybody. I'm saying all of us do this. No matter how spiritual we are, somehow it's like he just blinds us with facts. And by the time we realize the truth or recognize the spiritual reality here, we're two days into some battle that we've been getting whipped ten ways to Sunday. And then what happens? We feel bad. We feel guilty. We feel ashamed. We feel depressed. We feel bummed out. We feel sick. Because it's not really who we are. So if we enter into these things in the Spirit, we'll prevail. Yes. We'll come out on the other side victorious. Praise the Lord. Everybody needs to be reborn. Everybody needs to be regenerated in their spirit. When that happens, God tabernacles with you. And instead of, as He said to these non-Jews, these Jews who said they were Jews but were only Jews physically... They were the tabernacle of Satan. If you do dwell in the secret place of the Most High, if you make that your focus, it makes you a synagogue of Christ. Amen? You're going to be, somebody's going to be having church at your place. Yep. Okay. Hallelujah. It's either going to be the Holy Spirit yep. or it's going to be the enemy. Right. How many of you know the enemy comes to church too? Yep. Praise the Lord. I've seen him. I've seen him in the mirror. Praise the Lord. <laughs> oh, praise God. He does. he does. Amen? We're not possessed. No. You know, it's like I say, some people are not, uh, you know, they're, they don't, they're not stressful. You know, they don't get under stress. They're carriers. That's right. You ever been around somebody like that? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're always seem like, eh, whatever, you know. But they'll get you so stressed out and so freaked out by the time they get through telling you all the stuff that could happen and how it might happen and could happen. This is probably going to happen. It has happened. And, you know, you're going, oh, my God. I, I need a vaccine. I need, the, I need the antivirus. Praise the Lord. Well, here it is. It's the Word of God. We need to continuously inoculate ourselves yes. amen with the word of yes. the word of the lord amen with the truth praise god all right revelation 2 uh, verses 10 and 11 revelation 2 to and, and 11 so you you know i'm I, I i'm going back and forth in and out of revelation only because we've talked about this years ago i did a whole thing on revelation and you know i'm not a big believer in all of the flying you know locusts the size of Volkswagens and all this stuff it's symbolic there's symbolism throughout this Bible yes. and all of a sudden we get to the book of Revelation and we want to make it all real natural yeah. it's a revelation of Jesus Christ not a revelation of insects that are gone haywire 
or you know bad weather or all the negativity. I'm not saying there isn't some of that true. What I'm saying is, if we're not getting a revelation of Jesus Christ, we're wasting our time reading the book of Revelation or any other part of the Bible, because that's all it is, is a revelation of Jesus from beginning to end. And if you're not getting a revelation of Jesus, you're, you're just not getting what you're supposed to be getting. You're getting a bunch of religion, you're getting a bunch of rules, you're getting a bunch of stuff that will keep you confined, amen, to your soul, to the natural realm, amen. And so here he says, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I'll give thee a crown of life. Now here's the deal. The soul becomes a prisoner to natural thinking. Yes. To facts instead of the spirit. And I said before, we're, we're looking at to death. Amen. So be faithful unto death. Not your death. To the death of Christ. Be faithful yes. to what he's done. To the finished work of Christ. And you'll be set free from the captivity, amen, yes. that the devil wants to hold you yes. in prison to. Yes. Which is you and your abilities. Amen. Yes. Are you with me? Praise yes. God. Amen. I'll give you a crown of life. Yes. In other words, you'll reign in life. You'll, you'll, you'll have authority in life. Yes, Lord. Instead of being the dominated, you become the dominant. Yes. Praise the Lord. Instead of the enemy constantly throwing you into captivity or putting you into bondage or putting you in prison to your own soul or to your own way of thinking, amen, you can be set free, amen, because whom the Son sets free is free indeed. When the Word of God sets you free, the enemy cannot manipulate you anymore. Praise the Lord. Amen. So he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. Now, he just said, if we'll be faithful unto death. It's not our death he's talking about. It's the death of Jesus. Be faithful to what Jesus did on the cross. To the finished work. Amen. So, the first death was the one that Adam released on everybody. On every human being. That's the first death. Now, look at first, let's look at uh, 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 21. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 21. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. All right, Romans 5 and 12. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Romans 6 and 4. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. So the second death is death to the first death. The second death is death to the first death. Praise the Lord. Hebrews 2 and verse 14. Be faithful unto the death. The death that puts to death, the first death that brought you into this life, that made you a sinner, that kept you in bondage. Amen. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. That through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, the power of the first death. Yeah. Right? That's what the death of Jesus did. It destroyed the power of the first death that yes. brought sin and death into this world. Right. Amen. So we were born into Adam. But Jesus Christ holds the keys of hell and death. Yes. Praise the Lord. So Jesus dealt with the first death by nailing it to the cross, by putting death to death. Yes. Praise God. The first death is pronounced on everybody. Yes. Amen. And the passageway out of Adam's death is the death of Jesus Christ. Yes. Faithful unto death. Is what he's telling us. Praise God. So the second death is the removal of death and hell. Yes. Praise God. It's not just going to heaven. It's the removal of death and hell. Amen. For those who believe. Yes. The consequences of the first. Yes, Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. Revelation 20 and verse 14. For as much then... As the, uh, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Now wait just a minute. Death and hell are cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Alright? 
Now, but look at this. Revelation 21 and verse 8. But the fearful, unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, the whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So here's, here's the good news and here's the bad news. The good news is the fearful and unbelieving are the only ones cast into the lake of fire. Amen. The bad news is if you don't take the benefit of the second death, you're subject to the consequences of the first death. We don't have to worry about it. We've been born again. We're faithful unto his death. We have no part in the lake of fire. We have no part in the judgment. We've already been judged and found innocent in Christ. The determination has already been made about us that we're free of guilt and shame. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Amen. As believers, we've already experienced a death. And that was the wages of sin. And our wages have been completely met. We have received the free gift of eternal life. Praise the Lord. Hebrews 9, 26 through 28. Hebrews 9, 26 through 28. Praise the Lord. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, once in the end of the world, hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. The second death. Faithful to death. So we've got to find a way out. A way to die to the old humanity. And the provision that God makes is identification with the cross. So Jesus' death is our death. Praise the Lord. Verse 27 and 28 again. As it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. So he didn't just die for me. He died as me. Praise the Lord. He was offered once, the scripture says, to bear the sins of many. So identifying with the first Adam on, on the cross, right? Identifying with the first Adam and dying to the sins because of the sins. Amen. Then the last Adam through his resurrection. All right. We died on the cross. We were crucified with Christ. Amen. And now, the, and then the scripture says, and yet I live, but it's not me that lives. It's Christ in me. He liveth. Amen. So now I'm identified with the resurrection. Yes. The second death. Yes. That's what it produced. Amen. That's what the second Adam produces. When I receive this, I'm not touched by the second death. Is that clear to everybody? Yes. I mean, it's just another way of talking about how that we're born again. Right? But there is a death, a, a, an experiential way of, of that, that happens in our lives. And that's when we do not stay faithful to the finished work. Right. When we're not, when we look into that empty tomb right. and we see the finished work, we see the mercy seat, that now all there is is mercy for us. Now all there is is grace for us. Now all there is is the shelter of the Almighty under the wings, amen, the protection and the provision. When we come short of that, it's like a slow death. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? It's this life without the abundance of everything that God has provided for us. It's seeing ourselves not dead to that original death, amen, and so we can't Amen. Focus on the second death. We can't stay faithful unto death. I hope I'm not confusing you this morning. Praise the Lord. 
Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying? We need to be faithful unto death, but it's not our death. It's His death. It's seeing everything is accomplished. Everything is done. I'm not subject to that first death. It's been paid. I'm done. I'm out of it. It's over. But that's where the devil wants to drag you back to that place where you've got to die again and again and again and again. Slow torture. 1 Corinthians 15, 19 through 22. It sounds, you know, in the natural or religiously speaking, it sounds like, oh, you got, you're just taking advantage of it. You cannot take advantage of a God that just won't stop giving you. You know, it's like when Jesus sent him out, he said, if they ask for your coat, give them your coat too. I mean, if they ask for the cloak, give them the coat. Yeah. Right? You can't steal from somebody who just wants to give you stuff all the time. That's, that's the way it is with God. He's like your grandkids. You know, you just spoil them rotten, and, and you know, so they act up. Hey, Bless them anyway. Uh, do I like it when they act up? No, it's irritating. But I still love them, and it doesn't change the things that I want to do for them, and I want to be with them. And You know what I'm saying? The, God's refrigerator is filled with my scribbles. <laughs> and you know, I mean, he's just really happy with me. So if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them, that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Praise the Lord. So the bottom line is, you can either yield to the second death in Christ, or you can resist and suffer. Yeah. Even if you're born again. Yeah. You can see yourself under the wings of God. The finished work of Christ with a crown of life, ruling and reigning. Or, you're on your own. By the sweat of your own effort, you reap thorns and thistles. Praise the Lord. Separation from God, it's all about you now. And you cannot produce anything but a mess. And that's why Jesus took that crown of thorns. So that we don't have to deal with those anymore. We rest in the finished work. It's not by my effort anymore. It was all about His effort. Everything that He has done has given me right standing with God. Has made me the righteousness of God in Christ. Yes. Praise the Lord. We're getting close here. Hang in there. Psalms 110 and verse 1. Psalms 110 verse 1. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. All right, 1 Corinthians 15, 24 through 28 again. 1 Corinthians 15, 24 through 28. Where are we seated with him in heavenly places? And the Lord is saying, Just rest, and I'll make your enemies your footstool. Praise the Lord. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom of God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he hath put all things under his feet, but when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, meaning Jesus which did put all things under him, or God, I should say, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Praise the Lord. So again, you can either yield to the second death in Christ and not be hurt, be totally one with God, united with the Lord, or you can go the way of resistance and suffering. God gives us free will. John 16 and verse 33. These things I have spoken unto you, that ye, in me you might have peace. In the world, in the five senses, in the soul realm, 
you're going to have tribulation. How many of you can say amen to that? Y'all been living in this world any length of time, you've had some tribulation. Praise the Lord. In the world, you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Praise the Lord. I've overcome that sense realm. I've overcome the soul realm. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you'll identify with me under the wings, the finished work. So the bottom line is we want to see Christ as the first and the last. See Him as the one alive in resurrection power, able to redeem us from tribulation. Praise God. Amen. Able to deliver us from poverty. From all of the prisons, amen, that the devil has cast us into. Prisons don't just exist geographically. They are entrenched in our minds. In the soulish realm. That's why we have a tendency to repeat behaviors. Think you got the victory? <laughs> Praise the Lord. And then three months later, you're shaking the bars again. Get me out of here. I thought I was free. So bondages, you know, bondages that are allowed to creep back in, whether they're religious, amen, whether they're traditions, amen, whether they're ideas, whether they're concepts, they shackle us. They, they keep us from being who we are in Christ. They keep us from experiencing the benefits of who we are in Christ. Yeah, all power is given to Jesus. Jesus is all-powerful. He came to redeem us. Praise the Lord. He came to give us a revelation of Himself. A revelation of Himself that is able to lift us out of suffering. To get us out of the prisons that the enemy tries to lock us up in. To give us a crown of life. To give us an understanding of what's behind the veil. Yes. The wings of God. The secret place. What separates us? The soul. The natural person. Natural thinking. So he gives us this understanding of the wings of God beyond the veil. No more separation. The veil has been rent in twain. Yes. We have total access to God. Freedom to always be in His presence. To always be under the wings of God. To always be in the secret place. The place of atonement. A spiritual reality. Where God keeps you. You don't keep you. Your job don't keep you. Your mama don't keep you. You understand what I'm saying? God keeps you. Your intellect, your IQ, your, your hard work, it don't keep you. No. He keeps you. Yes. Nothing wrong with all of that. I said, you know, I always, I was thinking about this with Peter. I, I always tried to go the extra mile for whoever my employer was. But he'd always come and get me and bring me back to work. Yeah. <laughs> Say praise the Lord if you got that. Hallelujah. <laughs> And that's what we do with the Lord. We, we want to go the extra mile, and God's constantly trying to bring us back to what He's already accomplished. Always trying to get us to slow down and come back to the finished work. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. A spiritual reality where God keeps you. Yes. Where angels watch over you. Yep. Where you reign in life. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Where nothing shall befall you but good. No plague can come nigh thy dwelling. Yes. Amen. Yes. Where the great physician is always present with the right prescription. Yes. Hallelujah. Where he that became poor that you might become rich is always there yes. with whatever you have need of. For he that has called you into the beloved first loved you so that we might be able to love him. How do we do that? By entering in beyond the veil to the secret place, to the place of mercy and grace, boldly coming to Him and saying, Abba, Father, what you got for me today? This is a good day because it's a God day. Amen? Give the Lord a hand clap this morning. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Amen. Go! Because you're under the shelter 
Amen. Of the Almighty. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's not eider. It's not down. It's the feathers of God. Hallelujah. It's a good thing. God bless you. Keep that foremost. Whenever your soul tries to tell you something else, you tell it to shut up and sit down. You're in charge. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you all. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Have a great week in the Lord. God bless you. Bless you, brother. God bless you, Eric. Good to see you. Bless you, brother. Appreciate you guys. Love you. Glad you're back. Uh, in a way, I wish you could still be there, but we're good to have you back, too. God bless you. We're just tickled that you had the good time and really got to enjoy it. Praise the Lord. Now you know that you've got a destination for another year or two down the road. You can always go back and know what you got coming this time, right? Yeah. Well, we got to wait for God bless you guys. Appreciate you being here. Thanks again for coming. Hope you'll come back again and be with us. Appreciate you. Have a great week. I'll get it. Oh, <laughs> he did. Yeah, I get it, yeah. It's kind of like the... Uh, Cazadors, catheters. Good to see you, girl. How you been? Love you. Good, good. Don't you do that. <laughs> Knock it off. Good to see you, girl. Take care, Peter. God bless. Thank you, brother. Good job all the way around. Appreciate it. You kind of like hitting and catching your own cat, uh, balls, right? <laughs> Good job. I appreciate it. Rick. You know what? When I saw when I saw who I thought was you out there, they were driving a Tundra. And I thought, he's a Ram man. He, he, that ain't right. But it looked like you for some whatever reason. When I looked out of the corner of my eye, I saw you. And, I thought, and then I walked in here and I saw you sitting up there and I thought, He's, off, he's either really fast, or I just had a vision in the parking lot. One of the Must two. Have had a <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was weird. Yeah, I've been here for four years. Yeah. Now, she was gone. She took the stretch to get some bread from the high beans. You know, that high beans don't age. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So she just dropped you off on the way? And... No, I took the car. Oh, 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 okay. okay. She wanted the truck, so I took the car. But we, 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 yeah. I come here, I got here about 8.30. I just got out there and That's one of those things. You uh, still have eye damage because I can't believe what I just saw, right? <laughs> I don't think it turned her on your clock out. No, it doesn't. That's what shocked me. I mean, that's why I was kind of shocked because I thought, no, nah, that, that can't be that. Isn't right? That just doesn't look like Rick. He's, I know he's a Ram man, so. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, well, I don't know what I was seeing, but obviously, obviously it wasn't you. Okay. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah, I know that now. It isn't Terry. I gotta go out and check the mail. Hang in there, girl. Don't let it get the best of you.
Well, that was that was just cruel. I know it was. I thought. <laughs> can you lock up, Mike? Yeah, I got this. I can see this is ongoing. This is their like uh, pre. Super Bowl party? This is, this is the God is Love uh, <laughs> application we talked about. That's the Super Bowl. God bless you guys. Mike's like locking up. He's, the kids are still down there working on stuff. Saving eggs yet? Are you saving eggs yet? No. Okay, good. Oh, they will too, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, no, I was going to take it home. I'm still talking. No. Thank you.